over here in your like central command mission control, yeah. Adam. Um, the one thing I noticed that's different, and we'll start there, is no high watts. No high watts. No. I. Um, what gives? I always just kind of getting chasing other stuff, and um, it's all about. Um, I mean, the high watts were great. I loved that that era, but um, I got into these alembics a couple years ago. Um, are you familiar with the Alembic thing at all? Just vaguely. So basically made most famous by Jerry and yep. David Gilmore. It's, it's the front end of a dual showman. Um, but you have to use your own power amp, obviously. And that's where the Mesa comes in. Right. So I got into this, the Alembic thing, and it's so, it's all clean headroom. I mean, they're just, they're so, they're so creamy. And with, I don't know what it is, but with single coils, maybe that's why Jerry and Gilmore used them so much. With Strats and P90s, it really brings them to life in a way that like other amps don't. So I got into that and then various, I also have this high watt power amp that I've never really seen another one of, um, but I like the Mesa more. Um, and they're stereo, so they have three outs in the back. They have left, right, and then the summed. So you can cascade. I don't, I don't really do that, but I'll do it in the studio, but you can like, you know, use the second channel as a master volume or, and there's bright switches and you can cascade the bright switches and the tone stacking is really killer on them. Um, flexible platform. Really flexible. And like with my rig, like it's basically built on mostly like strats and jazz masters. So mm -hmm. you can get them really clear and, and loud. Um, and as you keep adding a few levels of clean gain for more sustain, it always takes it and just, they're really great. Um, so that is this side. I use one channel of Alembic and I got, how many speakers do you think are in this cab? I'm going to guess four. Two. <laughs> Completely um, inappropriate. But yeah, I, I got I, it from somebody in Dayton. Imagine two 15s? Yeah, no. two 12s. Okay. It's like a 2041 or something. But I just love, I just love the way it looks. Um, so that's one side, and then the other side is the Bandmaster uh, through the 412. Um, and then this is kind of like, I have eight channels, the Alembic, or four channels for backup, and I do run one line um, directly out of the Alembic to the house for some clean, like, DI stuff. Um, but it's basically just one side Alembic and one side Bandmaster. And where's the Swart come in? The Swart is kind of the third amp. So um, I got the Swart, I put the Swart in because when I use the SG, like something about the humbuckers, it doesn't sound as good with the Alembic. Mm. So when I, if I use the humbuckers, I usually use the Swart instead of the Alembic. And is um, the Swart working otherwise without when the SG is Sometimes not I'll use it as like a, basically a tremolo pedal. Oh, okay. yeah, like at the end of pressure, I'll just turn it on and have it on this deep tremolo. But usually it's on for um, thinking of a place and um, living proof when I use the SG. Okay. Um, but normally it's um, the Bandmaster in the, in the Alembic with the Marshall. And it's just, you know, you can get, you know, and I have the power soaks. So in a room like tonight, I can back off a little bit, but I can still keep all the gain structure as I want. I don't have to start messing with the... And you don't have to worry about taking out the stained glass at the rhyme. Right, here. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I, li I like these power soaks a lot. Um, but yeah, the high I miss the high watts, but um, I'm sure they'll come back one day. But that's what Gilmore would do. He would bypass the input of his high watt, use the Alembic as the front end, and they modded out the uh, preamp section. Why didn't you do that? Because... Um, I don't know, because <laughs> I just bought four. <laughs> but um, but they still make the red ones with this creamy red. That's like the, a certain era of the Alembic, the Sebastopol era. And then they still make them. And this is the newer one, the F2B, but they sound identical. I mean, it's such a great small business that's been going since late 60s in Santa Rosa, California. I mean, you know, they were basically, I think the reason they made the Alembic was because when Jerry started using the wall of sound yeah. and the Macintoshes, he was like, well, let me just take out the front end of your showman 
instead of lugging this Fender Showman around, I'll just make the front end of it, plug into that, and then into your Alembic, and then into the wall of sound. So I think at first it was maybe out of ease, but I mean, you know, I have this poster in my studio of the dead Jerry playing alligator, and like he has like 10 channels of Alembic, and Bobby has like 10 channels over it. It's like they're just racked up with Sebastopol era Alembic, so. Life goals. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they sound killer, and it's just like they're just super wide open, and the tone stacking's killer, and just with the strats and the, it really brings those single coils to life in a way that I haven't had luck with other amps.